Hellspirit. So, recently Season 4 of The Nine Realms came out, and until this show ends, I'm gonna keep being negative. So without further ado... No, you can't stop it. The show focuses on a new generation of the Dragon Team, Tom, June, Alex, D'Angelo and Eugene. They find rip-off dragons, find a new realm, find an old rally connected into the original property, recycle and repeat. I want to die! There is only one thing I've legitimately and will continue to like from this season. No, this entire show. And while I have headed the entire plotline of, you know, Hiccup being incorporated back into the story, and the even worse relic discovered, I'll get to that. But seeing Hiccup and the rest of the characters was great. These 2D pictures of the old cast were the only good thing in this show. That is all. I have a lot written here, and I have a lot that is shortened. Unlike the Nine Realms, I'm not trying to repeat the same topics as the last couple times. Animation is bad, humour is not funny, main and side characters suck. Over the rotation of the show, there has been a constant mystery for the characters. A mystery people guess from the trailer. And the show keeps trying to push this with these little trinkets. So let's see here. We've got a Viking helmet. And Sigil L is a clear connection to Hiccup. Which I will correct myself here. It was technically the strike class symbol. Then a spear hit. That's forgotten about. Then finally a box scroll thingy. And now we have the newest Viking relic. AKA the one thing I never wanted in this show, the Book of Dragons. I should also state that I'm exaggerating. Of course, it's not the actual Book of Dragons, but in a way, it's the show's version of it, as it details past dragons and Vikings. And just to get it out here, they made an item so useful get so useless because it's all written in runic script, which there is not a simple translator for. And I'm not entirely sure if how to train your dragon script is accurate. But I'm basically not a fan that they were handed this book. I wouldn't say that's a joke either. I was talking to my friend about this show in class and asked what the trope for that was. I couldn't think of the term so I thought it was expedition or a plot device. But he said plot convenient, which <laughs> it's the perfect description for how they find these items because then Tom conveniently finds the key they need by almost breaking the Viking helmet. They seriously had no respect for Hiccup this season and come to think of it every relic they've found has been clear. Plot convenience. Now when I talk about the show I nitpick things that are great about the show so why not explain one of its worst episodes. Episode 3 focuses on Wu and Wei being sick because they overexhaust themselves while saving Eugene. They try to find the King Dragon but Tom and June fight over Mists and the book's warnings. Now the entire episode is basically explaining why June loves Mists and why she trusts them. And yeah the message about why she loves Mists trusts her dragon would be a good sentimental message but it falls apart with June relying onto some myth with her dragons that are on the brink of death and her friends follow the guidance of the dragon book through the pictures since it can't be read where both sides are at fault and at the same time don't make sense. Cut in here, I forgot to originally add something utterly dumb on their part. While following the book, Tom somehow doesn't realise the other warning to the book. Now you could argue there was a hidden page in the book which I think that is what they were trying to go for but the dragon warning is on the next page and as a connected page to the original warnings. I've watched it slow, I've watched it frame by frame. I'm certain that the writers are at fault for this, so that they can make it seem that June is in the wrong. Actually, June is less at fault, but mentioning the Dragon King myth while her dragon is dying doesn't exactly look good. But afterwards, I am on June's side when it comes to trusting Will and Wei. You'll hear why soon enough. One of the fatal flaws in the logic of this episode, which makes it fall flat, is that how do the writers know better? Oh, cause yeah, they know what Will and Wei know. Now, the writers trusting the book would be a good idea, but it would have to do something that isn't linking back to the dragon. And it's the fact that why would everyone assume Wu and Wei purposely want to kill themselves? No goodbye on their part to June, so three seasons worth of them bonding means nothing? Bullshit. And my final piece of evidence that breaks it all is the dragon at the end. 
The King Wound Way Dragon is hyped to yeet dragons into a volcano, but when they grab Wound Way and despite being attacked, don't fight back. As a viewer, you should hopefully already know that the dragon means well, and that's only one of the six episodes, folks. Oh, yeah, did I mention they return back to the six episodes? No filler this time. Shocker that the show would get a season 5, and what do you know, it's with Tom's mother finding the secrets. Through season 4, Tom's mother finds the cave and sees the dragons, that's all we got in terms of that. And this season, she notices Tom has been lying to her, shocker. Not taking his drone for recording, being away for much longer past curfew, and more. But all it takes for her to find his secret is look at drone footage, and finds the cave they are in. <laughs> Which uh, does bring up the question, why is there even footage of the cave? Because I cannot for the life of me remember any prior episode that shows Tom using his drone since season 1. And I already know one of the two routes they'll go in. Tom will take his mother on a ride, just like what Toothless did. Or his mother will hate the idea at first, then allow it with restrictions to keep him safe. Or a mix of the two. So yeah, season 5. Can't wait. Also just want to include this here, there's another realm and I honestly don't care for it, that's all I wanted to mention. I can't wait for season 5 to get the mother a new dragon and shit, it's Cliff Jumper isn't it, it's gonna be Cliff Jumper. All right, jag off. So of course by now Thunder and Tom have a connection they don't know of, but we as an audience know they're Hiccup and Toothless descendants. But a story like this does not work unless your audience has never watched any dragon media. So for it to work, we have to know nothing about Hiccup, his adventures, his legacy. So what's a show that's in the same universe, yet so different? What's creators say that they didn't watch any prior content, so that it wasn't the same? Based on a classic Disney property, ladies and gentlemen, behold 101 Dalmatian Street. 101 is a show I haven't gotten to watch unfortunately, but the show is highly praised by many, but Disney just don't want to do anything with it, but that's not the topic for today. The overall message I want you to take away is how the Nine Realms could have taken inspiration, because 101's creators said that they never watched any previous content, just the original movie, which didn't really give it the best light, which has the same models, unevolved dragons, and of course the Descendant mystery. And sometimes this level of thinking doesn't work in their favour, but these two shows are very similar in terms of their premises. Both star the original character's descendants many years later, but a show focuses on the past, and another tries to stay away from it. And that's why 101 works, and why The Nine Realms doesn't. And if they had done what 101 did and stay away from the original cast, it would have avoided Higa's legacy in the rest of his entire life, because we know of their connection, but the characters? They don't. <laughs> I absolutely hate each of these characters, like they're just not fun to see on screen and you know the names, the new addition to the cast, Eugene and Buzzsaw. Eugene as a character was a predictable mess that of course would have been added to the main cast. And the only real twist reveal is he isn't the other writer for the cultural dragon. But something I hate about him in this season is he's carrying the worst mindset that he should be leader. Players have a real leader that's more like, mm, I don't know. Me? I'm the key to this whole thing. You're the key? How's that? Under my leadership, Tommy, you know, because if you don't have time to lead the mission, I'd be happy to- And after an episode of him saying that, it gets old. Quick. But episode 4, he sees Tom's worth and zips it. I know you're grateful that I took the reins of leadership today, as are the others, so you're welcome for that. But I think you've actually got a pretty good handle on this leadership thing after all. And while he is going through some sort of redemption arc, even though you see just a little bit of change, he pulls a Luna and backtracks at the end. Also, I just want to mention the only time I've liked him, and that's when he was explaining the use of Hiccup's peg leg, which the other riders don't think is a peg leg, and instead lifts off even dumber ideas. But what is this thing? An old Viking shovel? Or some kind of giant spoon to stir their gruel? Oh, right, yeah, re remember Leonard? I could not care less for his nickname, Budsaw. But of course, the main antagonist of the show returns after discovering the Ice Realm, where for some reason the Mother's Boy is competent in being a villain. But at the same time, isn't. Which is just 
So confusing. Now in this season, he explains he can set traps, magically has a porcelain tea set, and can make ice cages. Oh, and has piccolo classes according to him. And you'd think he's some genius, but in season two, he's shown to be some idiot who drove into a fire which blew up the gas in a van. Then in season three, he was a crazy person looking for the lightning bird. And in season four, uses a fake name to people he's never met and tries to kill a fucking dragon multiple times with a small hatchet. Something I forgot to mention was, oh boy, I can't wait for season five. Because there's a possibility that Leonard will start to ride dragons. Considering his failed attempt at it with Tom, which feels familiar. Is it just me? But moving on. So why is he even considered a villain? Cause he's a dumbass and yet he's somehow competent? So yeah, these characters suck. Alright, I have four main dragons I'll be talking about, not the ice drawn dragons you see in the background though. The Timberjack returns for some reason. Be lucky I don't yell like before about this shit. Previously on Experimental. How is there a squirrel? We resume with our regularly scheduled programming. Copy and paste. And then there's the snow race. I was gonna say I don't care about them and don't want to give them the light of day, but the nine rounds takes another step in the wrong direction. These dragons are from the original show, Race to the Edge to be exact. And what's this? No body modifications, no evolution to them. Just like every other dragon, they continue to spit in our faces with because they had another Ice Drone Dragon in Episode 2, which they could have used, but instead of the Yeti, they used the race, but for what exactly? Snow Race are the antagonists against Thunder's family, which have terrible and ugly designs. I guess no competition, Thunder is still the worst of them all, and the only one I like to a degree is the dad. And the mother comes in a close second worst. Also, the Snow Race attack and uh, they find a tooth that <laughs> neither of them lost or even look like it belongs to them. Again, plot convenience. I also have another small topic to talk about with these baby dragons. Besides how the show drives you to think the baby light knights are cute, Shadow, by the way, is this dragon is just not cute. Now that's cute. Because the entire reason why I like these night lights in the first place, and yeah, I will admit their designs aren't perfect either. And the reason I prefer them is because the animation complements their cuteness. This show doesn't have a big enough budget for it, and even without the uncanny quality, the budget needs to go somewhere into their small actions. Attention to actually being cute and not... Ugh. That's an actual frame, by the way. So yeah, the Nine Rounds mission of incorporating more unoriginal dragons continues, and the fact that they tried to actually... You know what? That's up next. This could be a video on its own if I'm honest, but remember the sad ending that departed Toothless and Hiccup? Well, oh boy, here we go again with a predictable twist. Basically, season four was the final mark for Thunder finding his family, if that wasn't obvious already. But yeah, Thunder's family is found, and the main thing I forgot to mention through my reviews was the entire storyline of Thunder finding his family. Like, there was a Skrill attack in season two where I think it chased off his family, and maybe a mention in season one and three, and just just like its characters, it's forgettable. And your attentions turn to the filler, and the absolute abominations this show thinks is cute. And so, at the end of episode 5, Tom must depart from Thunder, leaving his friend behind with his family, before he returned once more to help his friend's family one last time to leave his friend, until he decides to stay with his new group with the permission of the Elder Dragon. And it's so clear they tried to replicate that same tone, but the difference between the impact in that last movie was, we grew up with Toothless and Hiccup, we saw each grow, each becoming a well-known and liked duo. And yeah, they both tried to find Toothless's family, or anyone remaining of his kind. But Tom and Thunder are doing the same story, one without either growing, because unlike Hiccup, Tom can't fail for himself. Hiccup could defend himself even without Toothless. All Tom is doing is learning of his heritage past and finding Thunder's family, with the mystery of their connection in the background. But looking at either character, the mystery is crystal clear. They're descendants. And the conclusion of both characters staying was obvious, and to reiterate, the mystery is still there. We know, they don't, they haven't killed off characters, and when you think they have, they don't. <laughs> 
Season 4, I'd say, isn't any better than the previous seasons, and the only major thing they've done is given Leonard an actual role as a villain, or reintroducing abominations. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of this new season either, and they've only made me more mad as a fan, such as disrespecting Higat's belongings, or now just noticing the plot convenience the characters are receiving.